galaxy still needs its guardians. Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. So, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is the final chapter in this trilogy. At the end of the movie, the team splits, everybody goes their separate ways, and the Guardians, as we know them, are over. But this is not the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Star-Lord is confirmed to return, and Rocket Raccoon is the leader of the new Guardians, a team that includes two very powerful cosmic heroes. And there is so much story for these Guardians in the future. So, for this video, we're going to focus on what's next for the Guardians of the Galaxy and how Volume 3 might have just set up a giant space crossover event that will send the cosmic side of the MCU into annihilation. And we're going to talk about how all of this connects to Avengers the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. So we're saving the galaxy again? I guess. Awesome! All right, so let's start with the new Guardians of the Galaxy. Rocket Raccoon leads a new team, which includes Big Boy Groot, That's a big boy. Kraglin, Cosmo the Space Dog, Philovel, Adam Warlock, and his pet Blurp. Now, before we explain the future of the team, let's first talk about if there's a future for the Guardians at all. What the heck is that guy saying? I don't know. I think he's speaking Klingon. L let me try Elvish. Elvish. And now that's parcel tongue. Okay, I just, I need like one second to work this out. Just play a clip. There's a button under the handle. Press that in. Now what? Open the door. Está en el estante de atrás. Sí, gracias. De nada. See, that was really tough. Get this. He tried to speak parcel tongue, but I knew some hoodies. So then he countered with Navi and it turned out we both knew some Spanish. How did you learn Spanish? Oh, I learned from Babbel. They're the sponsor of this video. Now, I started using Babbel when I took a trip to Europe last year, and now, with just a few easy lessons every day, he mejorado mi comprensión de español. A veces. In fact, if you use our link in the description, you get 60% off a Babbel subscription. Now, I was always too intimidated to start a new language, but Babbel makes it so easy. And I also like the way they teach you sentence construction, where you construct a sentence piece by piece. So, for instance... Ella es mi esposa. Ella es mi esposa. That is my wife. She is my wife. There it is. And it's really just that easy. It's these bite-sized lessons. So they help you to start speaking a new language in just three weeks with these short 10 minute lessons that are made by actual language teachers and not some AI or an algorithm. Now the lessons and situations they use are dialogue that you would actually use in the real world. Like you're meeting new people and asking them where they're from and telling them good afternoon. And I'm telling you, Babbel really works. University studies have shown that 15 hours of Babbel equals a semester of college Spanish and they offer lessons in 14 different languages. So Babbel has a few different subscription options to choose from. So if you're interested in learning a new language, this is a great opportunity to try it out. Click our link in the description and scan this QR code to get started today. So like I was saying, is there a future for the Guardians at all? Because sure, the trilogy is finished. Gamora and Drax won't be coming back since Zoe Saldana and Dave Bautista are finished with the MCU. And other than Star-Lord, we have no idea when and if the team will return. But who'll be kidding here, Rocket and Groot are some of the most beloved characters in the MCU. So while Volume 3 was the end for the Guardians as we know them, Rocket and Groot will return in the future for more cosmic adventures. No one's ever really gone. And on top of that, there's the whole after afterlife situation from the movie. Rocket died. He met his friend Lila, and she told him that there's a higher power that's been watching over him and has plans for him. And then he returns to life. So here is this higher power. Well, we explained this in our Indian Explained video, so be sure to check that out for our full breakdown of what happened to Rocket and who this being is that brought him back. But the broad strokes of it is that Rocket has a bigger role to play in the future. So some higher power brought him back from the dead to serve that purpose. I shouldn't be alive unless it was for a reason. With Rocket becoming leader of the Guardians, it could lead to the next MCU crossover event, which will unite the space heroes against a major cosmic threat. And stopping this threat might be the reason why Rocket was brought back from the dead. And this brings us to two major cosmic crossover events that the Guardians were part of in the comics, Annihilation and the Thanos Imperative. These stories were about massive invasions from other universes that led to all the cosmic heroes joining forces to save the universe. Now, in the comics, the Guardians of the Galaxy assembled after the Annihilation event, and then they played a major role in the Thanos imperative. So Thanos is coming back? Well, not exactly. The story focused on Thanos and I don't want another resurrection, so like, just ignore the Thanos part. This day extracts a heavy toll. So there was this space war between the Inhumans and the Shi'ar Empire, and their battle ended up punching a hole in the space-time continuum. The space-time continuum? This created a rift called the Fault that exposed the universe to invasions from other realities. And so our universe was invaded by the Cancerverse. It's a corrupt reality where death no longer exists, so life spreads like a cancer, hence the name Cancerverse. 
This universe was ruled by ancient, nightmarish Lovecraftian beings called the Great Old Ones. Now, we've seen at least two of them in the MCU, the Tentacle Monster in What If and in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Anyways, beings from the Cancerverse invaded, and Cosmic Heroes had to unite to save the universe. And it was Adam Warlock who closed the rift and ended the Cancerverse invasion. But it did come at a grave cost, since that awakened Adam's evil self, the Magus. Now, I'm not going to get into too much detail into the Magus in this video, but let's just say that he could be a fan level threat if the MCU goes in that direction. I mean, Adam Warlock can be on the same power level as Captain Marvel and Thor. He's a space wizard with lots of cosmic power, so he's going to be essential in Kang Dynasty and Seeker Wars. Anyways, I'm going to talk about Adam and the Magus in future videos because this video would be way too long if we dove into that. So something like the Cancerverse invasion will give us an awesome cosmic war. And when you think about it, we've never gotten a space battle in the MCU despite all the cosmic movies. I am talking about a full-blown space war. Just imagine fleets of spaceships and a bunch of flying heroes going to war against some aliens. Like Star Wars, only also with flying people. Exactly! How awesome would that be? High five! Now secondly, these stories could connect to the larger multiverse crisis because of the invasion from other universes. Anyway, while the Cancerverse would be epic, Marvel should use another universe for this story, and that is the Negative Zone. Why? I mean, Cancerverse sounds so much cooler. True, the Cancerverse is great, and I would love to see it in the MCU, but the Negative Zone means the Annihilation Wave. Oh yeah, I heard about that, but what is that? Alright, so back in 2006, Marvel Comics did this awesome crossover event called Annihilation. The Annihilation was an epic cosmic story. This event reinvented the cosmic side of Marvel, and it revitalized many cosmic heroes, such as Nova. And this was the story that led to the formation of the new Guardians of the Galaxy. But what's this annihilation thing anyways? Alright, so for that, we have to first explain the negative zone. It's an antimatter reality. Antimatter. This reality was originally discovered by Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four. So, this is also a connection to the Fantastic Four. The negative zone is filled with all kinds of alien beings, but the main one you need to know about is Annihilus. He's a bug-like, powerful conqueror who's obsessed with ending all life in the universe because he's Annihilus. Who really doesn't care about anything? He's a nihilist. During the Annihilation crossover event, Annihilus started an invasion from the Negative Zone to Earth-616, the main Marvel Universe. Annihilus led a massive wave of ships of alien bugs called the Annihilation Wave. The only good bug is a dead bug. The attack was possible due to a portal in space-time known as the Crunch. It is virtually like the Fault from the Thanos Imperative that I talked about just a little bit ago. Now, while the universe was invaded by Annihilus, the Avengers were kind of busy fighting each other on Earth. You see, Annihilation happened during Civil War. So, the cosmic heroes had to join forces to stop Annihilus and his invasion. For the MCU version of this story, Marvel should combine the Annihilation way with the Cancerverse invasion from the Thanos Imperative storyline. And that is how we could get a massive cosmic event in Phase 6. Six, a movie where all the cosmic heroes, including the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Eternals, join forces against the Annihilation Wave. And I'm going to go over how this story could play out. But first, we have to explain how Marvel might be setting the stage for a cosmic event like Annihilation after Volume 3. But what about the big space guy who eats planets? Galactus? Yeah, what about that guy? Well, I kind of think Marvel's going to be saving him for later, maybe for the Fantastic Four film. Anyways, the Fault or the Crunch might be included in the Marvels. And in case you forgot, these were the rifts that opened the universe to these invasions. Now, based on the Marvels trailer, Carol, Monica, and Kamala will be switching places whenever they use their powers. This apparently happens after Monica touches an abnormal jump point. This might be a rift that creates the connection between the three heroes. The changing places thing is taken from the comics, and it connects to the negative zone. You see, for a time, Marvel, that was the first Captain Marvel in the comics, shared the same body with this guy named Rick Jones. Red? Hey, I can look at myself naked. Oh, brother. They could not occupy the same space and time, so every time one of them would be in Earth-616, the other one would be sent to the negative zone. They switch places with these Negabands. These are Kree-made bracelets with cosmic powers. And since the Kree are the baddies in the Marvels, all signs point to Ms. Marvel's bangle being the MCU's version of the Negabands. The movie's main villain, Dar Ben, has a bracelet around her wrist that looks exactly like the one Kamala has. And Ms. Marvel already revealed that there is another bangle somewhere out there. So where's the other one? 
So this is the second one. Speaking of the Negabands, Philovel was one of the main wielders of these cosmic bracelets in the comics. In fact, Philovel has many other connections to the cosmic side of the MCU. She and her brother, Genis Vell, are Titanian slash Kree hybrids. Their mother was also an Eternal from Titan. And they were genetically engineered from the blood of Marvel, aka the first Captain Marvel in the comics. Now, on top of that, Philovel became Captain Marvel herself. And she also held the title of Quasar, who is one of the MCU's most powerful cosmic heroes. So, this little girl could become very important to the future of the MCU. Anyways, the Marvels could be the start of the MCU's annihilation, and the Rift might be the first wave of attack by Annihilus, and the invasion might have already begun years ago. So Volume 3 brings back the Abelisks. These are the tentacle beasts that Mantis befriends, and they join her on her self-discovery quest at the end of the movie. The Guardians protected the Sovereign's precious batteries from one of these Abelisks in Volume 2. The High Evolutionary kept the Abelisks on his ship. Presumably, he captured some of the beasts that attacked the Sovereign over the years, and obviously he experimented on them to create his perfect race. The important detail about these beans is that they travel from another dimension. And can you guess where I'm going with this? Drum roll, please. Can anybody guess? They're from the negative zone? Yes, exactly. How awesome would it be if the Abelisks arrived from the negative zone? Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're attacking the universe since the Abelisks are Mantis' new friends, but perhaps they are able to travel into the universe from the negative zone because of dimensional rifts. And at some point, either in the Marvels or another MCU project, the floodgates between the two realities will crumble and the Annihilation Wave will pour in from the negative zone. And this is also where the Guardians of the galaxy could have an essential role in preparing the universe for this invasion. With her connection to the Avalisks, Mantis could discover that they are from the negative zone and that Annihilus is preparing an invasion. So Mantis is going to warn Rocket and the Guardians and then they would need to assemble the cosmic heroes to protect the universe. And this is how the cosmic conflict can connect to the larger multiversal crisis. One of the biggest threats in the multiverse are incursions. An incursion occurs when the boundary between two universes erodes and they collide destroying one or both entirely. Universes will collide due to incursions, and Doctor Strange triggered an incursion when he dreamwalked with the Darkhold. You caused an incursion, then we're gonna fix it. Not to mention that the events of No Way Home were an incursion as well. Universes colliding, endless incursions. So the incursions might be destabilizing these boundaries between universes. This created a rift in the negative zone that's how the annihilation wave will start. Or it might be a calculated multiversal attack. After all, this saga is leading to Avengers the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. And based off the credit scene of Quantumania, the Council of Kangs are the big baddies of the multiverse. These are countless variants of Kang who apparently rule the multiverse, and they are not happy that heroes from Earth-616 are messing with their domain. So what if the Council of Kangs will be responsible for the Annihilation Wave. That will mean that Annihilus will be working under the Kangs and the horde of bugs and the massive fleet of ships is a multiversal kill squad. That's some badass shit. It's pretty badass. In fact, this could be a great way to bring back the High Evolutionary. Isn't it that? Uh, sort of. I mean, Rocket decided not to kill him, but he basically did a Batman Begins. I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. He didn't kill him, but he also left him on an exploding ship that probably killed him. But we didn't see a body, so High Evolutionary might have survived. I mean, you never know. He was really powerful in the movie, so maybe just before the ship exploded, he created a force shield around himself, and then he floated off to his new colony. The new colony was mentioned a few times, and it's apparently a new version of Counter-Earth. Anyways, the Kangs could recruit the High Evolutionary to work for them, or the High Evolutionary might make contact with the Negative Zone by himself. He already experimented on the Abolus, so you know, that tracks. This means that the High Evolutionary could return and that he would be the one who's responsible for the Annihilation Wave. After all, the High Evolutionary not only wants to create perfect life, but he also wants to exterminate any life that he sees as imperfect. And what better way to exterminate all the life on a planet than with the Annihilation Wave? A billion space bugs whose only purpose is to kill, kill, kill. You know what? I wouldn't be against the High Evolutionary's return. I mean, this is just my personal opinion, but I thought he was a great villain. He has a lot of dimensions to him. He didn't feel like a one-node bad guy who just wants to do bad things in an MCU movie. So all of this means that there is a really good chance the cosmic side of the MCU is heading for a massive space war. And if we do get a cosmic event like Annihilation, then that means a huge team up
lineup of space heroes. The MCU's cosmic team can include the new Guardians of the Galaxy, the Marvels, Thor, if Chris Hemsworth returns to the movies. There's also Hercules and the Eternals. I mean, this would be a great way to bring them back into the fold. And then there's all the other cosmic heroes that weren't introduced to the MCU yet, like one of my personal favorites, Nova. He is a powerful cosmic hero, and it's only a matter of time till we see him in the MCU. I mean, Nova was teased since Phase 2. The Nova Corps appeared in Volume 1, and apparently Nova was supposed to appear in Endgame. And Nova's origin story has essentially all already been established off screen. Thanos decimated Xandar when he took the Space Stone. Thanos already has the Power Stone because he stole it last week when he decimated Xandar. That probably means that the Nova Corps was destroyed. And this is basically like the comics. The Nova Corps gets destroyed and then Richard Rider becomes Nova. Nova was the main character of the Annihilation storyline and he formed the Cosmic Alliance. Also with Phi Lavelle, that means that we could see Quasar. Many cosmic heroes held this title, including Phi Lavelle and Wendell Vaughn. And of course, since Galactus is going to show up sooner or later, that means the Silver Surfer could be part of this Cosmic Alliance. And oh, please Marvel, please give us Silver Surfer and get him right. Now, with all these heroes, we could see the continuation of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and that is the Annihilators. They are a team of cosmic heroes who assembled during the Thanos Imperative story. The Annihilators were formed by Cosmo, yes, good space dog Cosmo, based on Star-Lord's dream to create a powerful galactic team of some of the most powerful heroes in the galaxy. So, after the cosmic heroes stopped the Annihilation Wave, we could see the formation of the MCU's Annihilators, a team of space heroes who will lead the cosmic side of the MCU into future phases, especially since sooner or later, Galactus is going to come. Well, they're all gonna die anyway. And this is how bright the future of the Guardians of the Galaxy could be post Volume 3. And I didn't even mention some of the other characters that joined the Guardians of the Comics, like Agent Venom and freaking Cosmic Ghost Rider. Er, that sounds cool. Dude, you have no idea. So cool. And this is what could be next for the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, what do you guys think about all this? What should be the next story for the Guardians, and what Cosmic Heroes would you like to see join the team? Let me know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.